I want to return to the topic of Kant's ethics and specifically the categorical imperative. In fact, I still want to talk about the formula of universal law, the very first and I think most fundamental formulation. We've talked about how that applies to perfect obligations, that is to say obligations that are specific, specific things for specific people. It's slightly more complicated and in fact I think actually considerably subtler when we turn to the question of imperfect obligations. That is to say general sorts of obligations to do a thing of a certain kind but that don't give anyone else rights and that it would not be unjust not to fulfill even if it would be morally wrong. I might have an obligation to help others for example but that doesn't give any other specific person a right to my help in any given respect and I'm not committing any injustice if I decline to help them. I should help some people at some times but it doesn't mean I have to help this person at this time. So why are such obligations more complicated? Well, it's a different part of the test that applies. So let's consider first an example that Kant con considers that just has to do with myself. Is it acceptable to just live a dissolute life dedicated to my own enjoyment or should I develop my capacities, my talents? Here's his example. A person finds himself having a talent with which the help of some culture might make him a useful man in many respects, but he finds himself in comfortable circumstances and prefers to indulge in pleasure rather than to take pains in enlarging and improving his happy natural capacities. He asks whether his maximum of neglect of his natural gifts, besides agreeing with his inclination to indulgence, agrees also with what is called duty. So in short, we've got somebody with a talent, but they're lazy. They would rather just hang around, drink beer on the beach, goof off. They don't really feel like working hard to develop that talent. Well, is it okay? Now notice this is an imperfect obligation. You may have many different talents and it may be impossible to actually develop all of them. We have capacities that we take in many different directions. You might be excellent at a variety of different careers, for example, or a variety of different hobbies and avocations. And so that's not something you can really do. It's not like you have a specific obligation to develop all of them. But what if you decide you're not going to develop any of them? You just say, yeah, I'd rather just pursue pleasure. I don't really care about being a good well, anything <laughs> except a good pleasure seeker. Is that okay? Kant says, well, let's subject it to the test. Your maxim is essentially to decide, yeah, don't develop your talents. Well, could a system of nature subsist where everybody adopted that policy? Nobody developed their capacities. No de nobody developed their talents. Everybody would just hung out on the beach. He says, well, a system of nature could indeed subsist with such a universal law although men like the South Sea Islanders should let their talents rest and resolve to devote their lives merely to idleness, amusement, and propagation of the species, in a word, to enjoyment. Uh, obviously, Kant never saw an episode of Survivor to see what it's like to survive on a South Sea's island. But anyway, he has this image that, okay, they're just hanging out on the beach, having fun, devoting themselves to enjoyment. Could everybody do that? He says, well, I guess they could do that. There's no logical contradiction in that. You could live that kind of life and decide that's just it for me. I'm going to just hang out, drink, have fun, not do anything actually to try to develop my talents and skills. But now as a rational being, could you will it? Could you will that everybody do that? Kant's answer is this. He can't possibly will that this should be a universal law of nature or be implanted in us as such by a natural instinct. For as a rational being, he necessarily wills that his faculties be developed. We're going to come back to that when we talk about the formula of humanity. That is the key to the next formulation of the categorical imperative. Since they serve him and have been given him for all sorts of possible purposes. Well, there's Lisa deciding she's not going to develop her talents. Okay, now is that acceptable? Kant says no. And interestingly, his answer doesn't actually depend on the universalization part. That's one of the things that I think is puzzling about this example. I would have expected the argument to go differently. I thought, look, if nobody were to develop their talents, how do we hang out and have any fun on the beach? We're there on the beach, we're drinking some beers, let's say, enjoying the sunset. And then I say, hey, I want another beer. Well, wait, who's going to brew the beer? 
Nobody's developing their talents to make any beer. Nobody's doing the work. Everyone's just like, I thought you were making the beer. And so, you know, I thought, look, I rely on the talents of others. I thought that's the way it was going to go. And indeed, I think you could develop the argument that way. The universalization might get you into trouble. You can't just be a slacker in this way. And indeed, this would be, I think, Kant's solution to what is sometimes known as the free rider problem. Um, but actually, this is really designed, I think, to say, look, even within you, even if other people are doing their thing, and it's just you, you couldn't will it. You're a rational being. You can't but help will your own survival. You can't help willing your own rationality. You cannot will to be stupid or irrational or ignorant or ineffective. Why? Because a circumstance where you are stupid or ignorant or ineffective or irrational, well, you're not going to be able to get what you want. You won't be able to attain your own ends. So as a rational being, you choose means to obtain ends. Whatever those ends might be, and there, it might be you have lots of choice. But whatever they are, you can't will, you can't obtain your ends. Nobody wants to not be able to get what they want. And so he says, of course we want to be able to get what we want. That's just built into the nature of rationality. As a rational being, I value my own rationality because I value my ability to get what I want. So. I am, in this case, saying I'm not going to develop my capacities. I'm going to make myself ineffective and unable to get what I want. No rational being could will that. So here, it doesn't even depend on the universalization of it. It's really like even for me to will that I not develop my talents and capacities is to will that I become ineffective and unable to get what I want. Let's turn now to charity, the rule about helping others. Do I have an obligation to help others in need? Well, suppose I find someone, as in the Good Samaritan story, injured by the side of the road. They're alive, and I realize I could help them, but, you know, I'm busy, and I don't want to get involved, and I've got other things to do, and, you know, it might end up costing me something, and, and so on. So you, you're thinking, should I do it? Well, here's what he says. You know, a person who's in prosperity sees others have to contend with great wretchedness. He can help them. But he thinks, well, what concern is it of mine? Let everybody be as happy as heaven pleases or can make himself. I'll take nothing from him or even envy him. Uh, but I, I don't wish to contribute anything to his welfare or to his assistance in distress. So, yeah, I, I've got plenty. And, hey, I, I wish everybody the best, but I'm not going to help the poor. I'm not going to help this guy lying by the side of the road. That, that's up to them. It's their problem. Well. Kant says, can we universalize that maxim? He says, well, if it were a universal law, the human race might get by. In other words, yeah, we could apply that to everybody. We could say, hey, you know, I'm not going to expect you help from you. You don't expect help from me. We could all do that if we wanted to. And he said, you know, we might survive. <laughs> in fact, maybe we'd be better off than in a state where everybody talks about sympathy and goodwill or even takes care occasionally to put them into practice. But cheats when he can, betrays the rights of men, or violates them. So in effect, he's saying, could we really all just be selfish and refuse to help anybody? We could. There is no contradiction. But now, could a rational being will it? Ah, that's a different question. <laughs> he says, I don't think a rational being could will it. Why? A will that resolved that way would contradict itself, inasmuch as many cases might occur in which one would have the need of the love and sympathy of others, and in which, by such a law of nature sprung from his own will, he would deprive himself of all hope of the aid he desires." So Kant's answer here, I think, is a little surprising. There's no contradiction. We could all be selfish and refuse to help anyone else. But he says, here's the problem. As a rational being, I can't will that. Why not? Because I do value, as a rational being, being able to get my own ends, whatever they are. I want to be able to get what I want. <laughs> and I realize that I can't always do that by myself. It's not always enough to do that alone, solitary, being an island. No man is an island, but it's not just that. It's not just that I need the help of others. I might say, well, yeah, sure, I'll pay for it. I, that's no problem. I'm not helping them except by you know, using their services and buying their goods and employing them, perhaps. But, but yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm just doing that because it's in, own, in my own self-interest. 
Kant says, really? You're never going to need the love and sympathy of others? You're never going to have to rely on the help freely given of others? Are you sure? In a different translation, it simply says, he is going, he frequently will need, he often will need the love and sympathy of others. That is to say, the help of others that he's not paying for. Uh, it's not just a question of, well, yeah, the mechanic fixed my car because I paid him. There are occasions where I'm going to need other people's help, quite apart from that. Now, part of it is, I just may need love. I may need friendship. Human beings need that sort of thing. But we need to be careful about relying on that kind of argument because, after all, that seems to depend on humanity in a way that's going to suggest, hmm, maybe it doesn't apply to all rational beings. Do Klingons need other people or other Klingons? I don't know. I, we, we don't want this to rely on human nature, presumably. But I think the point goes beyond that. I am not always going to be able to do what I do and obtain the things I want just on the basis of acting on my own self-interest. I am going to sometimes need the help of others. Now, to some extent, there's an empirical premise here. But I think for Kant, it goes deep. Rational beings are not isolated. The things we want are not things we can obtain strictly in isolation. And so we are social beings. That has implications that other philosophers are going to say actually undermines other aspects of Kant's picture. But here I think Kant thinks that's really true. Some of the things I want are things I want as a member of a community, things I want as a member of a group, as a family, as, as something right that involves other people. And so I'm not going to be able to attain all I want just on my own or just because I'm paying someone else. And it's not just because humans desire love and friendship, though that's certainly true. There are times when I'm going to be that person by the side of the road, where I'm going to be driving along and suddenly find that my tire is flat and the spare doesn't have any air in it, or that my battery dies, or I'm going to suddenly find myself walking into the exam room and not having a pencil. I'm going to suddenly find myself in need of charity from others. And if I really cut myself off from that, there are going to be all sorts of cases later where I will really regret it. Now, I think the underlying point, really, is one independent of any facts of the matter. He is saying, as a rational being, I value my ability to get what I want, to attain my ends. And there is at least a very strong possibility that to attain my ends, I'm going to need the help of others. I don't want to cut that off any more than I want to say, hey, look, I just give up all of my abilities in a certain respect. That is limiting. That is harming my capacity for obtaining what I want. As a rational being, I can't will to do that. And to cut off the love and sympathy of others, the help of others, that would be another way of basically impeding my own ability to get what I want. As a rational being, I can't do it.